Hello, everyone. So uh, today we have a pretty awesome panel over here. And the topic we're discussing today is uh, blurred lines, uh, the merging of offline and online retail. So although the word omnichannel retail sounds very overwhelming, what is omnichannel? Uh, it's basically this um, you know, new emergence of offline retailers going online and online retailers who are going offline as well. Uh, there's definitely unique strengths in each. If we look at Amazon, Amazon started off as an online uh, retailer, but today you'll find offline Amazon bookstores. Uh, they've acquired wholesalers are merging. And even in India, China, these models are evolving at an even faster rate where we are seeing grocery retail chain stores have a very fast online uh, delivery service and we are seeing online retailers also starting to even buy up physical malls. So we couldn't have a more diversified and interesting audience here today. Uh, before I ask our panelists to introduce ourselves, just a quick introduction to myself. My name is Wise Rahim. I am the founder of a small company called Telegram, where we work on omni-channel uh, retailer automation. We have pivoted to a business enterprise SaaS model so I'll first ask all of our panelists here to introduce themselves. We'll start with uh, Shagnik Bhai, uh, if you could introduce yourself, and then we'll just follow the order. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, uh, thanks for having me here. So uh, uh, I am Shagnik. Currently, I'm looking after marketing and other digital initiatives, including e-commerce channel or e-tex. So has been uh, here for the last 20 odd months. Uh, Apex, uh, if I have to say the major strength and uh, obviously other than the brand, which, which is a good 25 year old brand and the export business being even older. Uh, what, uh, one of the key strengths which we feel that which is very relevant for us to actually harness omnichannel as a strength is the presence across all 64 districts of Bangladesh. So we have got a very significant uh, retail presence, physical retail presence, which is 250 own retail outlets, close to that. So, so that gives us, that really holds us in really good stead to launch the journey. We have been making baby steps, uh, and in the last year and a half, I would say we have made some significant progress. But certainly 2022 is the year where we are looking at having a completely transformational retail experience with absolute convergence of uh, online and online. So have, we're looking forward to having a great session and interaction. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, requesting Ashik Bhai from Sindhabad to uh, introduce yourself. Um, Hi, uh, this is Ashik Bhai. Uh, I'm the Vice President uh, B2R Business to Retail, Sindhabad.com of Sales and Marketing. So I'm here for a year uh, almost, and uh, yeah, that's what we're pretty much doing, business to retail communication, B2R, and uh, also looking after uh, industrial segment and stationaries and other parts, uh, which are new inclusions in our segment. And uh, we are covering uh, the retail universe of uh, urban of our country and uh, expanding, and that's it. Right. So just for our audience audience today, um, uh, when we say B2R, business to retail, uh, we're talking about sort of the you know, hundreds of thousands of retail shops around the country. Right? Retail sort shops of... around the country. Okay. Exactly. So it's the retail universe. Our retail universe is in the same way. In the same way, we have a retail universe in the same way. So this retail is actually in the same way. We have a daily ecosystem. যেটা আমাদেরকে সার্ভ করছে আমরা তাদেরকে সার্ভ করার চেষ্টা করছি থ্রু ডিজিটাল প্ল্যাটফর্ম পারফেক্ট অসাম থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ তনবীর ভাই ইফ ইউ গুড ক্যান ইন্ট্রোডিউস ইয়ারসেলফ ফর দ্য অডিয়েন্স শিওর থ্যাঙ্কস ওয়াইজ ভাই আই এম তনবীর হোসেন আই এম দ্য জেনারেল ম্যানেজার ফর ই-কমার্স মার্কেটিং এন্ড সাসটেইনেবিলিটি হিয়ার এট আরং এন্ড আরং অ্যাজ মেনি অফ ইউ মাইট নো ইজ আ ফ্যাশন এন্ড লাইফস্টাইল চেইন অফ রিটেইল স্টোরস হিয়ার ইন বাংলাদেশ We also have a more recently in the past decade an e-commerce presence, which delivers not only in Bangladesh, but to three other countries, the US, UK, and Australia. And um, we've been taking on a lot of omni-channeling initiatives, 
uh, in the past few years, and we have a lot to do in the, in the coming years on the way forward as well. So looking forward to today's discussion. Thank you. Awesome. And finally, last but not the least, Munaf Pai, if you could kindly introduce yourself. Yep. Thank you, Vice. So uh, I am Munaf Mojib Chaudhary. Uh, I work as the uh, Director for Business Development at ADA. So at ADA, what we basically do is, like we try to identify ourselves as a company that works with uh, data and analytics and A AI. The reason why we say that is because we are trying to utilize data analytics and AI for developing marketing business solutions for our clients. Like our clients could, uh, like we have clients across all sorts of categories and industries. But I think the focus that we have and uh, the, the special focus that we want to have is like whether we can really take data from uh, consumer data from the right channels where the consumer is actually interacting, be it online channels, be it offline channels, be it an app, be it Facebook, social media, and then also figure out a way to help our clients develop solutions so that they can actually reach out to these people that we have identified in those channels for their marketing and communication. And, and as a byproduct, we of course do those communications or we also help our clients create those communication and disseminate it through different channels. So I'm very, very happy to be part of this panel. Awesome, awesome. So I think there was a quote that I had read almost three, four years ago. Um, it was from a report where it was mentioned that, um, you know, retail is all about either the experience of it or the convenience of it. So whatever kind of retailer you are, you can you know, fall into one of these two categories. Uh, you know, e-commerce is not going to kill physical retail that's been established and physical retail is not killing e-commerce. But uh, what ends up happening is if there is a product that we purely need out of convenience, like we need some grocery item delivered as fast as possible, or we want some food delivered to us as fast as possible, uh, those verticals are growing immensely fast, right? But that doesn't mean that malls, uh, movie theaters, uh, you know, when you're going to go buy furniture or when you're going to go buy fashion, lifestyle uh, products, uh, those physical experience that the consumers are getting, those are here to somewhat stay. So I think um, on this topic, it's, uh, you know, amazing that we have, you know, two amazing brands here with us, uh, consumer facing brands, Apex and uh, Arom. And, uh, you know, it's immense pride for Bangladesh that, you know, these are two Bangladeshi built brands and the starting of any experience, whether it's online or offline, um, you know, it starts with a brand, right? So I'd love to open the floor to both Tanvir Bhai and to uh, Shagnik Bhai that, uh, you know, what are some of the largest challenges for a large established retailer uh, when they want to sort of uh, expand their retail online footprint increase their online sales and really make it a core part of their future strategy, right? Because we know that say majority sales is coming from offline. It's very difficult to get top management to, you know, really strategize on something that's contributing say one to five to 10% of total sales. But we know as the, you know, drivers of this industry, this is where the future is headed. So uh, the uh, floor is open to both, uh, both of you that what are some of the challenges uh, when you have multiple outlets already and you try to go online, uh, what are the first few hurdles you face? Okay, I can start off. Uh, so I would say one of the largest challenges is probably the entire legacy infrastructure that you come with. Having built a brand over 40 years, 40 plus years, there's a lot of systems already in place, processes in place. Um, you have certain types of human resources. And obviously, with the, these new systems of marrying online and offline, you need a certain type of skill sets, you need certain type of back end infrastructure. Um, and more than anything, it's, it's not only the digital infrastructure or the uh, technology part of it, but it's also the physical infrastructure. So read kind of uh, engineering all of that 
is quite a difficult process, especially when you have all these um, shops already that's uh, designed in a certain way. Uh, you have a culture within the organization that's built in a certain way. And to kind of adopt these changes that will make you, that will keep you relevant for the next 40 years uh, is quite a challenge on its own. And, and might I say that, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of, there's a lot of it advantages, of course, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to come to that. But, um, you know, it's easy to kind of think that, all right, I mean, at the core of Omnichannel, what is it? It's customers being able to shop offline and online in a very seamless manner. That's at the core. Then you have other things such as customer service. You have uh, CRM systems. You have loyalty and rewards, how you're earning online and burning offline or uh, buying a gift card online and then shopping offline, right? So it's all of these different systems that kind of have to work together uh, in a seamless manner. Um, and doing all of this is also extremely expensive. Um, so being able to have the um, energy uh, to do all of that and the right human resources uh, is certainly a, a challenge, I, I would say. Uh, I mean, uh, I agree with almost everything uh, that uh, Mr. Tanvir has said, uh, pretty much. Starting with people, I would say, the culture that has, that uh, um, uh, the, the physical retail model, how does, because uh, what we saw in our journey is that uh, it only the relevance of digital, growing strong digital assets, which we have been able to grow now. And over the last year and a half, what we have been able to achieve is that we have been able to increase the store traffic, the footfalls quite significantly through digital interventions. And we have been able to measure it to a certain extent, not perfectly, but at least we have been able to create some kind of measure that this is the kind of footfalls that we are giving. So we have got tools, Google My Business. So those are the kind of tools we have used. So once the Manso the, the important thing is that to, to have the criticality or to un, help people understand how important digital is and what kind of uh, actually the role it can play in enhancing the overall business. We felt that rather than straight away the model, the reverse would be actually be helpful to convince the management about the power of digital. So that is something we started with. So, um, and then what we started doing is then that we placed, we got the, got people to actually get the, the basic skill sets going. We started putting things like uh, QR codes in stores, uh, not just uh, uh, to drive traffic to website, but even on you know, regular uh, brand campaigns. So that is where basically the, 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 the store staff started speaking a certain kind of language during their interaction with the customers. So we could see that a lot of our success stories over the, even the brand campaign started with that, that we were able to get a lot of footfall uh, or a lot of traffic rather from the physical stores back to the channels, to the digital channels. So that was one of the things. And then obviously the, the last year, as I said, that we tried doing during the pandemic because we, we were hit by the stone closure uh, in, in late March, March of 26, 2020, and during the entire heat, which is which is the key business for Apex, for, for okay. fashion and lifestyle in general. I mean, that is that is a very significant part of our business and we lost almost all of that. So we tried to do getting into an on, on into a completely online mode using the physical infrastructure, but very clearly neither our people nor our processes nor our technology supported that. And that is that is why the, our actually this journey started from last June after Eid, and that is the journey we undertook for the second half of the year, and uh, and probably even the first half of this year. In the meantime, obviously the focus was on creating those assets and strengthening our our uh, our website, um, the, the overall experience of the website to how to get a, a better catalog, a more relevant catalog. And then again, when we were getting into this, we were again hit by the by a, by a second part of the pandemic this year. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, at the, exactly the same time. And that is where the learnings of last year really came handy. And we were actually able to, now the, now the people support was there. The tech support was still a, a pretty much a long way away. 
but at least at least we were overnight able to transform stores into fulfillment centers and we were able to do that uh, at scale probably uh, we were able to you know, overnight transform about 25 to 30 outlets but the issue was that still the customers were used to shopping uh, offline as far as epix was concerned so those that is where obviously and we did not have a very robust technology yet but we were able to do significantly better with a lot of support and that is what we are carrying on now we we do use stores and we are currently in the process of integrating uh, stores as both fulfillment channels as well as basically using the store uh, inventory and basically we are even trying to customize uh, customize basically the the what the customer sees at the front end this is where they are physically located and that is the transformational journey we will we want to do over 2022 where basically where the, where so that there is a complete harmony in terms of in, in terms of the various elements within the organization the the primarily the staff in stores who were able to complement this journey the whole challenge the biggest challenge was that people faced which you started uh, i mean saying that we do not the online and offline do not compete but complement each other that is why what i would say the, the biggest learning and the and the biggest success was that now uh, as a company as an organization people inside understand that online and offline complement and that that is what is basically and we are now investing heavily on, on technology as well to do this integrations and completely uh, we are transforming the fulfillment experience which has been i must say not that great infrastructure hurdles are there and there are at the same time our own things are there because because going close to the customer is very important because and that is what because we have such a extensive network of stores it helps us in a great way to actually be as close to the customers right so shagnik bhai i think you touched on two very interesting points you know one of them is that uh, when retailers want to go online they decide that uh, you know before we are able to roll out a pure omni channel model say if i have 10 outlets uh the retailer considers okay let me make my central warehouse or a depot my 11th outlet and make use that as my online channel so i'll have a standalone e-commerce website with the inventory from that 11th outlet and that will be my online channel and from there they sort of get the feel of how the uh, market is responding and then the real challenge becomes when you want to take the rest 10 outlets online also then you run into all of these issues of what is my inventory real time in the outlet right now how can i tell if you know this particular size of this color is actually on the shelf or if it's actually in somebody's basket inside the store um so that's a question which i'll definitely ask uh, tanvir bhai uh, in a minute but before that uh, i think there were also very interesting analytics uh, related questions that uh, you know uh, you had you know, topics that you had discussed so uh, munaf bhai here from ada uh, my question would be uh, you know there are so many interesting ways that you know agencies can play an important role in trying to measure to at best approximation possible that how can we do online activity such as you know generating a coupon to use offline so that we can you know tag what is my online activity what is the actual output or conversion and the same we can use offline assets like qr code and you know in store uh, reward and uh, points to drive offline sales but that will eventually increase e- online recurring sales in the future so what are some tools that you know retailers can you know really munafai Sorry, I think in the last part, I think I missed out a bit. What, what was the last part that you asked? The question. Oh, right, right. It's just what That's are some the of the tools? Part. What are some of the tools using existing platforms like Facebook, uh, Google uh, right. Analytics right. Marketing that retailers can get better visibility into their online offline uh, right. conversion? Right. I think. Thanks for that. Thanks for that question. I I think one of the major things that we really really need to work on currently is that we need to figure out how do we uh get proper data of our consumers exactly where they are interacting with us like for example how much data can we actually get from people who are visiting our stores can we get data from people who are actually visiting our stores so that that's like the first thing to think of because 
one of the bigger challenges of attributing online and offline is that you design your personas based on your understanding of who your potential customer are for your particular brand and then you try to look into a particular social media platform or go to google try to understand uh, like try to like superimpose this persona that you have into that platform and try and understand who these people are but but the first and foremost thing is that now that brands and now that brands and as well as the consumer are heavily connected to the internet that means people's movement and everything are they are living their digital footprints everywhere so so i i think one of the most interesting things that we do is that that's the like uh, for which is very much applicable for retail is is uh, we try and take uh, device ids of smartphones who have actually visited a low location like this can be taken through both ways like, like we can utilize the telco environment for this we can also use the digital advertising uh, ad exchange environment for this so what we essentially do is we uh, we can map those people who have visited particular stores to a very good uh, like a to a pretty narrow uh, dimension or like a ra radius like a 30 or 50 meter within like 30 meter radius we can actually map and see who have actually visited a particular store so if i think of our own or if i think of apex or if i think of any other retail brands who have uh, stores out there so so one way to one very interesting way to do this is 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 find your audiences who have actually visited your store and then you have access to telco data you have access to the advertising data you have access to their footprint data as to wh which other stores do these people go to what other sort of digital buying behavior do these people have so these are analytics which are available out there and and these are analytics that can be utilized because you you see for retail one of the biggest challenges currently is probably getting access to proper research data because we don't have access to a lot of research data right gone are the days of the big uh, research agencies who would have small sample size of outlets and then extrapolate the entire country based on those small sample sizes right now we need actual data of people because people's behavior are changing we need to really look at this data so so one of the very interesting things that we do is this and and i think uh, uh this is something that the retail industry can explore because understanding people who have actually visited your locations and and then mapping those people and trying to understand their entire behavior will give a lot of insights into how people are actually uh, doing their things how they are actually living by where do they go from our own to to apex to what other uh, local stores do they go like uh, when i think of a mood modi dukan like a, a target audience of arong and 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 apex as well also probably goes to mulit tokens right so there is a very interesting and a complex uh, behavior that is available now, now now what i'm saying is that those data are available which can be utilized by the retail industry and and then of course we we have data in facebook we have data in google we have data in in app like share it who are giving data there are ways to utilize omni channel tools to gather data for all your interactions that are happening through whatsapp channels viber channels and so 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 the best part about what we are doing right now and retail being like this like retail is basically no longer you cannot define retail with whether it's an online one or an offline mall retail is where people purchase so that is where retail is right so we cannot limit retail into if i if you have a shop that's retail if you don't then that is not so so i think all these data are actually out there available and and uh, it is of course not it's not like a switch that like tomorrow if we want to turn it on we will be able to turn it on for every companies out there and then everyone is starting to get data but we, we need to start this i'm sure a lot of companies have already started this i know both uh, uh, shognikda and tanvir bhai both are very very much uh, uh, data driven i have had like we have had discussions on this previously as well and and i know both of them are very data driven and they are doing things at the back end and and uh, uh, 
But at the end of the day, I think the analytics bit comes in when you can actually collect data from where your consumers are interacting with you. And that is a very key thing to think of when you're thinking of this data. Right. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, if we had more time, we could go into a lot more detail uh, into some of this. Uh, but I think you touched on a very important or very interesting topic, which is, you know, um, say it's the same consumer base that is visiting, say, Mudil Dukans and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the unorganized market as well, as well as the organized retail. So we have with us Ashik Bhai from Sindabad. And, you know, Ashik Bhai has, uh, you know, Sindabad has been working to revolutionize the uh, digital B2B supply, right? So all these uh, Mudir Dukans, small shops in malls, uh, they are right now buying their products in a very traditional manner. Some products, they have to go to the wholesale market, buy the product themselves, bring it back to their stores. So um, uh, there we are seeing models in India as well, where Reliance Geo, for example, you know, has is building up its army of network of millions of Kirana stores to digitize, uh, you know, Bharat, India. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what is Sindabad? So, what is Sindabad sort of doing right now? What are some of the challenges it's facing, and what is the you know opportunity over here for the end ex- end consumer? All right, thank you very much, Wise Bhai. Uh, I got the three of your questions. Uh, what is Sindabad doing right now? What are the challenges we are facing, and what right. are the opportunities we have? Right? Yes. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So let me let me uh, tell them one by one. So what we are doing, Sindabad is providing Shastra Shamadhan. Bangla Judi Boli. We are providing Shastra Shamadhan, which is like ultimate convenience and solution to an extension part of B2B business. Jeta ke amra ekun B2R bolchi. So business to business ke amra jodi to segmented kori, then this B2R business to retail came. And this is a huge universe, Jeta Amada Charpashache, all around us. All right. So by B2R, we means all the uh, retails which falls under starting from wholesale up to large retail, medium retail, and small retail. So key what we are providing. Business to uh, enterprise solutions, which are to the companies. So B2E and B2R are two segments of B2B Jetas Nia Sindabad Kaj Right, right, right. right? So, so if we, we, cover, if we look into B2R, uh, right. you know, what are the, the challenges? What are the challenges on the B2R segment? Okay. Challenges are uh, before challenge, should I continue on what, what we are doing for one more minute? Yeah, of course, of course. All right, okay. All right. So uh, what we are doing, we are providing them solutions. Like AJ enter retail universal kichu pain as there are some pains they are facing, which is in procurement. So they have to go to the wholesale markets for procuring products at a cheaper rate, and then they bring to bring back to them. All the wholesale markets do not come to them. It's the big companies jara dokane product diashe, right? But the uh, they have some pain points. So we pain point the solution the is in the badashche. So we are bringing the entire wholesale market and wholesale products and stores into the Sindabad app. So that's the online offline integration. All right. So puro market ta ke jokhon ami hoy product ta ke jokhon app available kore dichi retailer kache app ta ase retailer tokhon hoy app e dekhe order jokhon korte am retailer ta dokane boshi order korte amra product ta dokane delivery kore dichi. So ta shastroy hotche orther. তার সময়ের এবং তার নিজের যে শ্রমের সবগুলো শাস্ত্রয় হচ্ছে বিনিময়ে সে শাস্ত্রের সমাধান পাচ্ছে তার কম খরচ হচ্ছে আমরা ফ্রি অফ কস্ট ডেলিভারি করে দিচ্ছি সো তার ডেলিভারি একটা কস্টে সেটাও বেঁচে যায় তার সময়ও বেঁচে যায় সো আমরা যখন বলি যে উই আর প্রোভাইডিং শাস্ত্রের সমাধান টু দা বিজনেস টু রিটেইল সেগমেন্ট অর দা রিটেইল ইউনিভার্স সো দ্যাটস হোয়াট উই মিন এন্ড দ্যাটস হোয়াট উই ডু অসম সো বিকজ দ্য সেগমেন্ট ইউ আর ডিলিং উইথ ইউ নো মুদি দোকান it's a change of habit right for them to start right, ordering right. so what are right. some of the challenges you are facing uh, trying to scale this up first challenge is uh, when we are like we have some say, in, internal uh, uh, terms uh, when we are segmenting the our customers 
like first generation retailer, second generation retailer, modern retailers. So first generation retailers who are like a bit aged, who are not, who do not even uh, like uh, properly introduced to smartphone as well. Even they're comfortable with bar phones. Mm-hmm. All right. So there we are facing challenge. But who are smart retailers, second generation retailers or modern young retailers? They are very comfortable with the uh, app uh, order because uh, like uh, all the telcos, what they have done, all the MFS platform, mobile financial service platform, what they have done. So that revolution actually helped us. So we store actually challenge of the product that order for the on time. That's the simple thing. But first generation retailer Jara Hochi introduced na a app per interface. Ebung Jara A Puro Jinista Bojana, Tadar Juno Amada challenge it a hoy, Amother Chicken Salesforce deploy core, Tadarke Bojata Hoy, Tadake Bishash Korta Hoy, yes, this is the best price. Tadakonabo cross check core, cross check corner for other order place core. So eta hoche act on a challenge. So is the psychology of the first generation retailer, Jeta ni Jeta actually Amra uh face coach the major Right. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely. So I wanted to jump right back to Tanvir Bhai. So um, Shagning Ta was uh, discussing about, uh, you know, the different approaches that retailers take. You know, one can be a decentralized approach where each of the outlet acts as the fulfillment center. And, you know, customers can say, if I live in Gulshan and I want to go to the Tejgao, uh, our own outlet, maybe that's the closest to me. I want to order online and pick it up in store. So what are some of the ways that Arong is, you know, rolling out omni-channel solutions and what are some of the challenges Arong is facing in trying to execute that? I think the only way you can be true, true omni-channel is if you do decentralize. I mean, nothing can be centralized. Right. Essentially, you want to give your customer access to all the stock they can uh, get access to, whether it's online or in the store. So, and, and additionally, on, on you that to, point, Tanvir yeah. Bhai, uh, because Arung itself is so unique that it has so many categories, right? Starting from home decor to fashion to, uh, you know, it, it, it probably has I mean, thousands of SKUs. Um, what challenge does that present from this omnichannel uh, perspective on, you know, really trying to track the inventory and availability of these, say, 100,000 products uh, in one location? Right. I mean, having all of those SQs in one location is virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's very difficult, unlike, let's say, an Apex, which might have one sprint sneaker, let's say, that has a thousand, two thousand pieces behind it. uh, You you can imagine one Jamdani Shari that's uh, worth a lakh. Let's say the Jamdani Shari that Miss Badon wore to the Khan's festival, right? There's probably only five pieces of that. We have 22 outlets and an e-commerce presence that's serving four countries. So those five pieces, um, it, it's impossible to have in 22 locations, but we could have it digitally, but it'll still only be those five pieces. So it'll, it's, it's very hard to have every single SQ online and every single SQ offline uh, at every single location. If you're an Apple store, which has X amount of SKUs, let's say, it's possible. But for us, that's one of the challenges uh, we face. And I think the bigger challenge, you know, you were touching on this a bit uh, before as well. Um, One is, what if a customer is walking around with that inventory, but you've already sold it online? You can imagine an E that our own, um, you know, when I myself probably can't get in the door, right, into a shop. So you have no idea what customers have in what basket. So the way to kind of manage that is to have a buffer stock online. So if you have only, let's say, 10 pieces of a certain SKU at a, at a certain outlet, you're only going to show five online and keep five as buffer. The greater the, the, the festival, or the larger the campaign, the larger the festival, the more buffer you have to have. The other part of it is every shop has something called a back store where you keep some excess stock. That excess stock can fully go online. And what you'd have to do is when someone is going to the back store to take it to the display, You'd have to have a system uh, where you're checking it out of the back store so it's no longer available online or it's, uh, it's, it's integrated with some display stock. So you have to segregate that stock very specifically. The other uh, major challenge you know, I was touching on initially is in terms of the technology infrastructure, 
Um, for full omni-channel, you need a full omni-channel uh, technology infrastructure system. There's only finite number of um, players that have these types of systems at the moment, and, and even very fewer which can fully automate everything across the board. Um, we, for example, our tech stack at the moment, we have Magento in the front end for e-commerce. We have an inbuilt ERP in the back end. And for these two systems to talk, uh, talk and to be able to do things like click and collect from the shop, mm -hmm. um, you need a very expensive omni-channel system in between. Mm -hmm. And um, either you built that in-house or you're exploring partners, traditional people like SAP, Oracle, Microsoft 360, or other uh, third-party vendors who specialize in this. Right. No, definitely. I think Ashik Bhai, uh, sorry, Tanvir Bhai, the, this, uh, this is probably what, you know, retailers struggle with the most is, you know, understanding the complexity, like you mentioned that, you know, the simple solution to that problem where, you know, somebody could have an item in their basket is you really have to figure out that, okay, I have an online inventory count. I have a store back inventory count, and then I have a shelf inventory count. So maybe in the shelf inventory count, I want to have some buffer. Um, so these are some of the things that once retailers start rolling out their online omni-channel model, you come across you know, so many of these challenges. I was once working with a retailer, uh, an offline traditional retailer, uh, and in their cosmetics uh, section, they had 72 different colors, mm -hmm. shades of lipstick. But when... It, you know, this store had started almost 15 years ago. And back then the IT department thought these are all lipsticks. These are all like 72 different shades of lipstick. Let's use the same item code. It's the same thing. You know, so somebody at some point decided that they're all these 72 shades are the same thing. But when they were trying to go online, they were like, there's no way they can get the shade wise inventory availability. And then they realized that, you know, Maybe 10, 15 years ago when uh, retailers had to have their own servers and, you know, database store, storage was actually a cost. You wanted to reduce your number of items, et cetera. It might have made sense. But in today's world of omni-channel retail, you just can't do omni-channel retail with an infrastructure like that. So a long lead time goes into just doing the basic hygiene of, you know, figuring out how can I start doing online and I think the most important thing at the end of the day is, you know, what financial results is this delivering right now and it will deliver in the future. And most importantly, how ready are the consumers, right? So uh, Ashik Bhai spoke a little bit about some of the challenges around, uh, you know, Modi Dukan who still uses maybe a feature phone. And we face that same challenge when we're doing B2C e-commerce as well, right? Um, in today's context, many customers of Apex are probably maybe going to the website, browsing the different design, and then maybe taking a screenshot and going and showing the physical outlet that, hey, can you show me this product in this color, right? So what are, and definitely the B2C smartphone penetration, data penetration, this is improving drastically, but from your estimate, how large do you see, how large do you think this segment of consumers will be in the next five years? So if you look at 2025, um, you know, we have a rough idea. Bangladesh has 160 million people. Maybe the target consumers are maybe about 15, 20 million people who are, you know, shopping from us regularly, all of our different platforms here. Uh, but by 2025, what is the aspiration that how large do you think this consumer base who is both digital and also has internet usage and can do an online checkout? I think for structured retailers like us, it's almost a must, you know, and structured retailers like us don't necessarily attract the entire 160 million population. Mm -hmm. Unlike, let's say, Ashik Bhai, who's probably more connected to a larger segment of that population than modern retailers like us. But for modern retailers like us, if you don't do omni-channel, I think it's ultimate, it's a death sentence for yourself in the long term. So now is probably the time to invest, figure out all of those lipstick codes that you need to put, you know, fix and um, get, get your supply chain, your human resources, your technology stack ready for the next 10 years. Now is pretty much the time to do that. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the competition right now 
is no longer just local competition. Today, we're looking at you know a global competition. You know, we have we we can order products from from China that end up coming maybe two weeks or three weeks, uh, but um, you know, when we are buying like a fashion item, we have to compare it to you know the shipping cost of getting it delivered from uh, America from Amazon. Uh, maybe Flipkart and Amazon India might start deliveries to Bangladesh within the next two to five years. Uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, they're already doing deliveries. So uh, I think this mix of providing the variety and the smooth customer experience, like Tanvi Bhai mentioned, is going to be the deciding factor between life and death for so many retailers. And it's amazing to see, uh, you know, Shagnikda, Tanvir Bhai, you know, Munav Bhai, uh, Ashik Bhai, that we're really working on so many of these cutting edge technology. I think all of us know that the ecosystem today is still quite small in terms of the number of shoppers who are online. But the fact that this is going to grow drastically in the next five years, and the fact that we want to invest today so that the ecosystem is ready, I think this is this is incredible. So, uh, you know, major props to everyone over here. And, um, you know, Munaf Bhai has been doing a lot of interesting work. So I think even after this panel, would love to continue the conversation. A lot of retailers would find it super fascinating to have more in-depth conversations on this as well. Uh, so in the best interest of time, I think uh, today, let's maybe wrap up, uh, wrap up the conversation. If anyone has any closing comments, you know, feel free to, if we might have missed something out or you really wanted to share something that you didn't get a chance to, feel free. Otherwise, we'll basically wrap. I think I want to just give a perspective into that question regarding where we might be five years down the line. Just a very simple Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a perfect tool. So, so uh, you you see, now we are discussing how we want to be ready to sell through Omnichannel, right? And let me give you another very interesting perspective. I think all of us here and all of us who are watching who has children were probably around five to uh, like maybe 11, 12 years old. Like I have a nine-year-old who comes to me and says he wants money or like his gift for doing well in his exam is that he wants to buy an avatar for his Fortnite character, you know? So before we know it or not, the next generation is going, the commerce that they are getting into is way, way different to what we are thinking of. Absolutely. Like Gucci has products for avatars, right? So Gucci is designing products that you can only buy for your online avatars for your games. Yeah. I think five years down the line, I want, I am sure we'll probably see Apex and uh, Arong probably sell products for games because these children who are like now 9, 10, 11, they'll be 15, 16, they'll want more out of this. Yeah. So I, I, I think the future is much near to where we are. I was very lucky to be part of a Facebook conference a few days back but they were talking a lot about this metaverse that they were talking about, you know, having this virtual world. This is actually there already because my son, he doesn't want anything else. He was like, he was saying, I'll do well in my exams, but you give me this avatar, like this cloth for my avatar for my phone. Like, so, so, so I think just wanted to end, like, yeah. add that to this, bring a perspective that we are probably much closer to the transition Absolutely. or the evolution that we are thinking of online or offline commerce or this entire retail space that we're talking about. Yeah. I think there's a quote that says something along the lines that we always overestimate how much we can achieve in one year, but we always underestimate how much we can achieve in 10 years, right? In a decade. Sure. So I think uh, sure. in our case, we're talking about five years, right? By 2025. Right. So definitely. We have immense opportunity and we should get ready by now. It's high Absolutely. time actually for all of us. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone who's made, uh, you know, time to, uh, you know, share your insights, knowledge uh, with everyone who's uh, listening into the live seminar. A lot of these panels are a lot more interesting and fun when we do it in person. But as the COVID situation, you know, improves, things are coming, have almost come back to normal. But inshallah, from next year, this, hopefully this will be in person. So till then, uh, stay safe, everyone. And uh, again, and congratulations. Thanks to like, all our you know, my honorable panelists and the moderator and management from, from my end. And thank you thank for you like so uh, having me in this panel. Truly honored. Truly honored. Yeah, truly an honor to be part of it. Yeah. 
Same, same. Thank you so much. And thank you to Bangladesh Brand Forum uh, for putting together this amazing panel. Uh, I really enjoyed having this discussion. Um, thank you so much.